My name is Nick Bowman, and I'm with the Prairie Lane Partner Sales Department in Winfield, Kansas. Today, we're going to talk about downforce and margin and uh, what that means to you on your planter. So first of all, what is correct downforce and margin setting and how, what does it look like? So we're looking for a defined trench. We want a defined trench with no loose soil, um, you know, on top of the seed, and we want a consistent planting depth. So let's take a look at what too little margin uh, or too little downforce would look like. So we're gonna have inconsistent depth. The seed trench is gonna cave in on the sides and we're gonna have dry soil around the seed. And that's gonna give us poor seed to soil contact. So you'll see here in this picture, we have two small plants and one large plant. So this, these two small seeds were affected by the dry soil that fell around them. And they had to wait on that first rain before they could germinate. So what does too much downforce or margin look like? So we're gonna see um, some scalping um, here on the ground. We're actually really compacting that seed trench. It's um, very, very firm. And you'll see that the roots will have trouble coming out of this trench because it's so firm. And also the closing wheels are having trouble closing this. So where does margin come from? So we need to talk about the downforces, which would be the seed and the hopper, uh, the residual frame weight, uh, weight transfer from the toolbar. And we have our up forces, which are going to be our row cleaners or coulters, um, the true V disc openers, and even our closing wheels. So what is margin? Downforce minus up force equals margin or the residual weight on your gauge wheels. Let's talk about some different downforce systems. Um, all pneumatic downforce systems have uh, an air spring on each row unit. Each rank has the same downforce on each row unit. This is really important in a split row planner because front rank and rear rank can be set differently. Uh, basically, I have an infinite number of settings between 15 and 400 pounds. Uh, this is available on all models. And the pneumatic downforce system is transferring weight from the toolbar to the individual row unit. Uh, standard pneumatic downforce is switch activated. Integrated set point and active systems are all controlled from the display in the tractor on the go. Uh, and mechanical downforce springs can be added to row units operating in wheel tracks. Um, so this is a good example on, uh, uh, on a 1790 split row planter on the rear rank while planting soybeans. Eight of the units are actually running in the planter's wheel tracks. So in these eight units, you're gonna see an extra downforce spring uh, which gives an extra 90 pounds of downforce in addition to the downforce supplied by the airbag. And this is to help counteract the effects of uh, the planter in the wheel tracks. So let's talk about standard pneumatic. This is going to be on planters with Seed Star 2 or a CompuTrack 350. So standard pneumatic downforce is separate from all planter electrical and hydraulic circuits. Um, the operator is going to determine or monitor the amount of downforce on the downforce gauge. And the operator turns the switch on and off to vary the downforce and is going to use the knobs to release downforce. So now let's talk about an integrated pneumatic downforce system. So this is going to have the electric air compressor on the tongue of the planter with a five gallon storage tank on the back of the planter. Please note that you need to drain the water in this tank daily. And then the row unit has individual air springs on the row unit. Uh, one thing to note, uh, model year 15, they actually moved the compressor's air, air filter inside the tractor cab. So if you have a model year 14 or older, there are parts available to convert uh, these older planters to get that air filter in the cab where it is pulling in the already filtered air. It's gonna really help with your filter cleanliness and the life of your compressor. Um, so this is a Seed Star 2 display where you're actually gonna set down force from the display, but you have no indication of current margin. So this is set point pneumatic. This is the next level up. So this is gonna be still manually setting down force, but you are gonna get a margin feedback on the screen, which is done through a gauge wheel load and margin sensor on the row units. Um, same compressor um, as well. Um, so what we're actually setting here um, on set point is we're actually going to set down force and it's going to read uh, the actual down force, but you, the operator must manually adjust the target down force to maintain an ideal margin. 
So let's go through the process of setting a set point pneumatic downforce in the field. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to set our default setting of 75 pounds of downforce. We're going to make a pass through the field in an area of with average conditions. We're going to ignore this margin at a glance window. We don't want to look at this right now until we get everything set. So after we've set this downforce and we've actually gotten out of the tractor cab and went and looked at the ideal seed trench and we have an ideal seed trench so we know that this number is doing what we want it to do. Now we can set the margin at a glance screen to replicate this condition over the whole field. So on that next pass, we need to memorize this margin. It's telling us this margin number and we need to know what that average number is that's giving us that proper seed trends. So then we need to access the alarms and limits pages. And the way we're gonna do that is we're just gonna hold down this uh, downforce icon for five seconds. And once the alarms and limit pages come up, we can actually tell it what our target margin is. So we have to set this at the, what we're seeing in the field is correct. So we're gonna set our target margin also notice in this screen we can set our high margin alarm and our low margin alarm and do keep in mind depending on field conditions or operator uh, preferences you want this gap to either be big or small depending on how you want to react the bigger the gap the less alarms you're going to have the less picky it's going to be but the smaller the gap the more those bars are going to be active and show you so it's really going to be personal preference on how you want that to look you can also set pause timers which we'll get to in a little bit on how long you want it to pause and step values is how many pounds it moves every time you hit the arrow So now that you have set target margin center line, this is how this, this display would look when everything is working correctly. So we have minimal bars, so everything is kind of meeting that average margin that we're shooting for, and this is how it would appear when everything is an ideal situation. And this is feedback coming off the gauge wheel load sensor. So now let's take a look at what this screen would look like in a sandy, uh, sandy ground. We move into a sandy part of the ground. The bars are moving up on the graph, indicating that we have a larger margin or gauge wheel load than what is necessary. So what's key to know here is on this set point is the operator needs to manually reduce the downforce. So we actually have to come in and change the downforce ourselves until we get this graph to realign to how we want that. So the computer is not going to do it. The operator has to change downforce to, to get back to the required margin. Same scenario except in hard ground. So you're going to notice the bars are now below the graph. So this means we actually have a lack of weight on the gauge wheels or a lack of margin. So the operator manually must increase downforce until we get our margin back into an acceptable um, reading here. So now let's talk about active downforce, active pneumatic downforce. An active pneumatic downforce is going to take a lot of the uh, manual uh, settings that we just went over, and it's actually going to let the computer do the hard work for you. So one thing we need to realize when we go to the active downforce, we're going to get this big 10 gallon uh, hydraulically driven air compressor on the back of the planter. Uh, it's going to give us that capacity for that machine to make all those changes. So we need to hold down on the uh, downforce button again, and that is actually going to bring us into the settings and alarms pages. We'll go to the settings tab and we're going to enable active downforce. So you need the check mark in to be able to run the active downforce. So if you do have active downforce, the one reason you might want to run uh, in set point, like we just talked about, is if you have a lot of irregularities in the field and you don't want the planner trying to uh, change for those all the time, you can actually uncheck this box and run it in set point mode. But we want to have this check mark in this box. That way you can uh, enable active pneumatic downforce. This is where we're going to set that pause timer and also that step value for when we hit the, the increase or decrease, how much it's changing at once. All right, so now what we want to do is we're running, uh, getting ready to run the field. We're going to set target margin. Instead of downforce, we're actually working with the margin number, which if you remember is the residual weight on the gauge wheel. So we're going to set this number. We're going to get out and we're going to look at the ideal seed trench. We want it to, you know, have that nice, um, you know, no loose dirt, but not too compacted. And we're going to look behind that gauge wheel, but before the closing wheels where we're going to view that ideal seed trench. So we're just trying to set this ideal margin. The display is going to show the mar uh, margin here, but it's also going to show us the adjustments it's making in actual down pressure. So keep in mind, the computer is monitoring margin, but adjusting downforce automatically for us. This is the 
active pneumatic pause. So you can actually click this button and it will pause the system so it will not make any adjustments. And we set that time in that alarms page. And we would use this whenever conditions are changing faster than you know the active can complete the adjustments. So do keep in mind at planting speed of maybe six mile an hour, that's nine foot per second that you're covering. And that gives you kind of some kind of idea how long it's going to take or how much uh, you know irregularity it can uh, change for. So now let's go over the sequence to set our downforce. So the first thing we need to do is set our frame weight distribution. Then we actually want to set our row cleaners, and that's because our row cleaners are going to provide some amount of upforce on our row unit. So we want to set that first. And then we're going to set our closing wheel down pressure because this is also creating an upforce on our row unit. And after we have those settings, then we can start setting our downforce or margin to get an ideal seed trench. So again, where do we look for the ideal margin and ideal seed trench? We're going to look right behind that seed tube, but before that closing wheel. This is the area we need to see.